From Unbound in Emporia, Kansas. Welcome to the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show. Coming up this week, gravel racing should be tough, but not too tough. Epic, but not too epic. Muddy, but not too muddy. Competitive, but also not. We discuss why some complained that Unbound gravel was too hard this year. Do they have a point or are they just moaners who will complain about anything? We also have got the fashion industry's take on cycling kit, luxury cycling parking, apparently. Yeah, you just wait, mate. I think we can all barely contain ourselves. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that 30% of people regard cyclists as less than human. Yeah, and sadly not because our superhuman endurance sculpted calves and a healthy glow. No, it is a slightly concerning stat, isn't mm, it? And yeah, one it we will come back to in a future show. We also learned this week that an avalanche of new tech is on the way. At the latest pro men's road race, the Dauphiné, new Ridleys and a new BMC have been spotted. Yeah, meanwhile, in the mud of Kansas, a new canyon was ridden to victory in the women's event by Caroline Schiff. Yeah, we think we would need a jet wash to be sure. Well, that is true. Now let's go back to that mud, shall we? Unbound, the world's premier gravel event with over 4,000 people taking part now and had its blue ribbon 200 mile route, a section of horrific so-called peanut butter mud from mile 11 and lasting several miles past that. Yeah, now for those unfamiliar with peanut butter mud, <laughs> Unlike actual peanut butter, it really doesn't taste very good and has very little nutritional value. The similarity is in its consistency. Yeah, it is dense and fudgy, some might say claggy. It sticks to everything and clogs it. Now, I've never ridden through peanut butter, but I suspect it would play havoc with your bike. Peanut butter mud definitely does. It does. Now, a lot of the big race favourites suffered mechanicals. For many, their races were over, even after just 11 miles. And everyone, everyone was off and running slash walking. Mm. Speaking of race favourites, as you probably know, Connor was racing at the weekend. We'll have a full feature for that coming up this Sunday. But I was very pleased to see that in the esteemed publication, Cycling Weekly, he was... Well, rather ambitiously, I guess, perhaps, listed as one of the top five riders to watch. <laughs> Serious? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, if the criteria is entertainment, yeah. they are definitely not wrong. He literally That's is true. not just top Mr. five, but the best yeah. rider to watch from Unbound. It was like being on the set of Ninja Warrior. Like a muddy Ninja Warrior. If it's not, yeah. I would hate to think how much Connor is paid for that particular plug. But anyway, thank you, Cycling Weekly. Yeah, we're getting slightly off topic here. That section of mud did not sit well with everyone. It certainly helped contribute to their 30% dropout ratio, and clearly the more people who pass through a section of mud, the worse it's going to get. So the pros, I guess, had it easy. And at the party end of the race, it probably didn't feel much like one, did it? No, especially not when you've got another 190 miles to go. Yeah. Cue, therefore, an avalanche of moaning. Mm. I mean, on social media, it will look like an avalanche. In reality, maybe it wasn't that many. But still, the questions were asked. Could the organisers not have rerouted it? There is no place, they say, for walking in gravel racing. Ted King, not a moaner, no. pulled out of the even more epic 350 mile XL event because he didn't want to give himself tendonitis or trench foot. That sounds a bit like moaning, doesn't it? But anyway, he's not a moaner. Strangely, pro mountain biker turned pro jack of all mm. trades, Jeff Kabush, who is a moaner, a world champion in that discipline, in fact, was quiet on that particular subject. He chose to moan instead about the broadcast coverage. Ah. Well, you couldn't watch it on GCN Plus, unfortunately. No. We only had the Crichton's Dauphiné, the Brussels Classic, and the BMX World Cup instead, not to mention catch up on everything of, on demand. and Yeah, on literally more, everything else. Yeah. Right, back to the original question. We have segued once again. Is there any place for extreme terrain mm. and extreme conditions in mainstream gravel racing? Yeah. We're probably the wrong guys to answer this, given our track record. Well, you are, in particular. I would argue, yes, 100% sections like this need to exist in gravel racing. Unbound, right? 
is the most prestigious mm. race in the gravel calendar. It has to maintain its it's place true. as the most prestigious and being easy or even mildly difficult is not the way no the history of gravel is an extreme events quite often it's type two fun but the most memorable events are the ones that take you to the really dark places yes that is true so when i did the further east ultra mm. race like the gravelly one there was one section that i had to tackle at about 1 a.m and it was thick bumpy grass it was so painful progress was incredibly slow and it was made even worse by the fact that we'd already done 200 miles and at the yeah. time i was so pissed off like really just fuming like i couldn't believe the organizer had included it on the route i thought it was a mistake but now i wouldn't do it again but it's part of what made the event and i survived it yeah that's it isn't it to, to all the riders that survived Unbound this year, they can be even more proud of their achievements after what they went through. And for those of us that were watching avidly on the sidelines, it adds to the lure of the event, doesn't it? It does, yeah. I like, I've always kind of wanted to do it after watching this year. Mm. I really want to do it yeah, now. I'm it's a true you. challenge, and long may it remain as mm. such. And for those who moan about it... I'm sure you'll be back again once Even the dust so. or the mud has settled. Because gravel wasn't meant to be easy. No. Take up road racing. Oh, oh no whoa. way. No way. Or track racing? Oh, we've got a crash in the back Oh, and three riders are down behind. Yeah. Okay, maybe do the Gravel Racing World Championships instead. Remember that people complained that it wasn't even hard enough. Exactly. So, Manon didn't moan about her gravel race, to be fair, but I'm not sure she would do it again. Nah, sigh. Moaners are gonna moan. Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Should gravel racing be extreme? Is walking just a step too far? Do you know what they need, mate? What's that? A rule. Gravel racing needs another rule. Get involved in the comments <laughs> section. We look forward to reading it. It's now time for hack forward slash bodge of the week and we have some absolute crackers this week coming up with uh well the first one from jizzles 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 i think it's jizzles j sizzles j sizzles that's yep. it yeah um i went into a touring stand so i made one of an old washing machine lid a rear triangle from a kid's bike and some other stuff i had in my parts bucket i filed the end of one of the screws down and put an inflation needle on the other it works for me the hardest part was taking the kid's bike that little sh almost whooped me but i threw some sand in his eyes and took off with his bike fair play i mean you get hacked for that <laughs> right but it does look like a pretty incredible little contraption it looks here. amazing like genuinely i don't i've never felt the need honestly for a true stand in my life um although I've, it happened many occasions ever true to will maybe not no i guess that's what workshops are for <laughs> yeah Fair enough, mate, yeah. No, but that, that looks cool. I take my hat off to you. Uh, and uh, and I'm sure the kid who's bought you next is probably happy to see it looking so good as well. I really <laughs> like looking that. Looking so good. That's a hack from me. But the poor kid's looking at his bike going, oh, look, there's some forks stuck up through a washing machine. Wow. <laughs> He's like, God, yeah, anyway, moving on. What's next? I'm assuming, by the way, that Jizzles ha hasn't actually Jay kicked Sizzles. that bike. Jay Sizzles. Um, no. So, yeah. In future, salt. yeah, we, we think it's Bantz. <laughs> if it's not Bantz, you're going to be disqualified. Okay? But we're saying hack, aren't we? Oh, yeah, yeah. 91% yeah. uh, of you lot mm. clearly thought that was Mega Bantz as yeah. well, and have given it hack too. So uh, that's a that's a great way to start, isn't it? Uh, next one, uh, Dave Analik. Can I just start by saying this one is for you? It because is. I have seen many a time you walk in like Mr. Puddle Duck with your blooming yellow crocs all round Nepal that's all you'd wear <laughs> literally uh, right um, we've gone off topic Dave Analik said I caught a brief mention of crocs in a recent hackle bodge I thought you would all enjoy this restoration I love the word there yeah, yeah I recently completed some very used all cotton Vittoria Corsa gum wool worked perfectly <laughs> crocs are so ugly that anything is a bodge where they're concerned but I'm tormented by synthetic products going to landfill and these trashed crocs seem like the perfect candidate for saving. Um, epilogue. <laughs> oh, this is brilliant, this one. I live uh, in a heavy gravel hipster land, Eugene, Oregon. 
and have gotten many positive comments from the bespoke mustachioed style maven pod. A young fella even said to me, those thingies would be dope paired with my crust. I don't know what that is. Wow. Is that a bike? Yeah, it's a bike. Yeah. Um, but anyway, there you go. Um, I mean, they look like they were utterly trashed. Um, and now they look remarkably cool. No, so they don't. To you they then. are still ugly. Well, yeah, but, you know. I would not be seen dead in a bag of Crocs. Really? <laughs> not even yellow ones? <laughs> no. I'd rather wear bare feet. Crocs, if you're watching this, you know what to do. Send us <laughs> your finest pair. Maybe with those little things that you can oh, put in the holes sweet. to modify Jesus. them. Jesus. Moving on. I've got wait, one. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, a minute. We haven't given the results <laughs> here. Uh, oh, you lot are on the fence. 56% hack. Uh, I'm going to say that's a hack. What about you? Oh, bodge. <laughs> <laughs> right, we got one in from Alonge. 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 No, hold on. Alexandre. <laughs> Alexandre. <laughs> That's what I was trying to get to. Okay, start that again. I know you're going to put it in. <laughs> right, we got one from Alexandre Porto. I saw this on the Arduino page. I would love to talk to the person who did that. It gave me so many ideas. What is an Arduino? Well, it's basically like. You know, a board, like in physics, you use it to create, you know, different, it's based like a chip. It's not the way you put, your, you know, the science chips. <laughs> now, neither Hank nor I know, <laughs> but I think Do you know it's how like, hard that is to explain? It's like a little, it's like a little super simple computer that you can program, isn't it? Like a Raspberry it's, Pi. Yeah, exactly I the think, same. I think, isn't it? Yeah. One of those, basically. Yeah. Imagine yeah. a bike computer with powerful and visible OLED translucent or even an e-paper. Dang! Now that sounds cool, but I don't really know exactly what it is. No, uh, basically, we've looked at the photo, and from the photo, we have uh, worked out that it's basically a homemade bike computer, which is very cool. Now, I would not want that. Uh, not at all. But I love that someone has made it. I am on the same as you. You know, I'd love to be able to do it. I think it's freaking cool that they've managed to actually create a bike computer on your own. Um, so it's a hack for me, but like I say, I, don't, I, don't, I think I'm going to stick to my Wahoo. Yeah. Yeah. Begs the question though, just what can you do with an Arduino board? Well, well, I don't reckon I could do a huge amount. <laughs> no. I'd probably be able to keep it on my desk and yeah. then stop things yeah. blowing around. Yeah, exactly. uh, right then, okay. Uh, I'd say that is a hack. What about you? Hack. 53% yeah. of you like say hacks. So I'm guessing a lot of you are looking at that neat and tidy GPS unit underneath and thinking I would rather have that, please. But uh, <laughs> anyway, that's cool. Fair play to you. Uh, right, next up, Jolly Giant. Has Aero gone too far? These are my Aero Carbon Valve Caps. Wow. And they don't even weigh one gram. Wow. What are we saying here? Well, now, I think Aero's gone too far. I'm no aerodynamicist, right? But surely an aerofoil shape on a wheel is kind of fundamentally flawed, right? Because wheels are round, and therefore what might be an aerofoil in one direction one, yeah. is the opposite in the other. Well, that's exactly so correct. I do wonder where, uh, I feel like I have a couple of, couple of monkeys here having a conversation about aerodynamics, <laughs> but I feel like it might be the wrong shape. I mean, so, I uh, would agree. I, I, like, you know, we, we were saying earlier, you, you would expect it to be blunt on both sides, wouldn't you, to be aerodynamic in both directions? Perhaps if someone who was eminently qualified to talk about this could uh, pass Not comment. us is what we're saying. Not us, but um, but yeah, I feel like that might be a bodge. Even though it weighs a gram and you've made something out of carbon fibre, which gets thumbs up mm. in my book. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, layering might. carbon fibre is pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. So, uh, I sometimes do that when I'm taking a break from programming my Arduino board. The, I'd love to see your inside of your man cave. Because <laughs> it doesn't look like that. No, it doesn't look like that. Yeah. Right, anyway, I'm going to give that a bodge. What about you? Yeah, I'm going to give that a bodge, mate. Uh, ooh, 43% of you lot said hack. So the majority's of Bodge. bodges there. There we yeah. go. <clears throat> right, then, last up. This is one for you, mate. C. Murdler found this for Oliver Bridgewood just to take a shot at Simon Richardson. Yeah. <laughs> a sticker with a zip tie wrapped around fixed it. As long as it's a temporary fix, that's fine. It's if that fixed it sticker stays there for an eternity and you accidentally use your zip tie as an integral mm. piece of your bicycle. That's when I'm not happy about mm. it. Which is which is valid, but I, I've got to say, you know, cable ties are 
amazing. So keep sending in your cable tie hacks, not bodges. <laughs> right. Uh, some good ones there mm. and some terrible ones to finish off. Um, we love, love, love seeing all your hacks and bodges. Remember, there's loads on the GCN app. That's where you upload them. And then we go through and we pick our favorites each and every week. And now it's time for Cycling Shorts. Okay, let's kick off Cycling Shorts with news of Cycling Shorts mm. or <laughs> Strappy Cycling Culottes, as high street fashion retailer Zara calls their new bibs. Yeah, Road CC spotted the new Cycling Drop. With, drop? Yeah, drop. With these shorts featuring an 18 millimeter thick chamois, Strappy Cycling Culottes slash sofa cushion. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I think it must have been a typo there. Decimal place at the wrong point. Yeah. You'd hope. Anyway, mm. um, I do like seeing high street fashion do cycling. Mm. To be fair, it actually looks okay. The price tag is pretty whopping on it. But yeah. the best bit for me is that one arm warmer look. I found that really strange. Yeah. I, was looking at, I, I was trying to work out if it was an arm warmer or was like a, an elbow pad No, or it's, it's arm warmers that you can buy, but they've only used one. Some stylist has looked at us cyclists and gone... That is what is officially <laughs> cool. One arm warmer. Yeah, they may be inspired by Mike Woods. Well, maybe they were. I mean, many people, well, no one was. Poor old Mike Woods. <laughs> anyway, on to road now. And the Criterium Dauphiné has kicked off, as we mentioned in the intro. As we film this, Jumbo Visma continue their runner form with Christophe Laporte picking up stage one. Trek announced their new title sponsor for their World Tour teams as well. Trek Segafredo will become Lidl Trek, graduating from our sponsorship of the Quick Step team to title sponsor of one of the most successful and progressive teams in cycling. Yeah, as opposed to successful teams. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, it also, so we're told, marks the first time in cycling history that there's been no professional top flip, top tier, I was about to say, was top flight slash top tier team, <laughs> with an Italian title sponsor. So no mm. Italian title wow. sponsors in professional cycling right now. It's a bit sad, isn't it? Yeah. Speaking of sad and sticking to some racing news, I am sure after an epic Giro, we're all excited for the Tour de France yes. to kick off in under a month's time. Woohoo! Yeah. But there is one thing that the organisers are slightly nervous about, and that is the annoying and Really frustrating, COVID-19. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it was really sad, wasn't it, in this yeah. year's Giro, seeing the race favourites, the leader of the race, Remco Emnibal, having to pull out due to testing positive for COVID. Mm. So organisers of the Tour de France rightly are having to go back to the dark ages mm. of 2020 and 2021, planning to roll out a stringent anti-COVID protocol for this year's event. Yeah. Now, what does that mean, do you ask? It will mean that team members will have to limit interactions outside the race bubble. No eating. Out. And uh, <laughs> no eating. Out. There you go. Respect social distancing. Do not get close to the spectators. No selfies. And you guessed it, no autographs, which is now becoming less and less because it's all about the selfie. Yeah, that's true, actually, isn't it? Mm. Um Oh, it's a bit of a shame, isn't it? But it won't affect the racing. Or no. um, it will affect the racing in a positive light. Yeah, and I think that's one thing to take from it, you know? Like, um, we want everyone to stay safe, don't we? Yeah, we do, yeah. Mm. And we want we want Tade Pogaccia and Jonas Vingor yeah. fighting it out to the bitter exactly. end. Exactly. I guess in brighter news, here's something I spotted on parking.net. On where? Parking.net, you, you, or your network, you know, not one-stop shop for all your parking news and your jobs and your opportunities and everything to do with parking. Great. Yeah. Fantastic. There's another one to bookmark. There you Clearly. go. <laughs> you laugh, but check this out. Amsterdam has unveiled a brand new and cutting edge bicycle parking garage that looks like something straight out of, you know, a sci-fi movie. To be fair. That does actually look pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the aim of this revolutionary bike garage is to tackle the ongoing demand for bicycle parking spaces in the city of Amsterdam. Now, there are some really, really, I've got to say, really, really cool uh, features on it. An HPF system, for example. Which is what, exactly? Well, I don't actually know, but it's basically parking jargon, isn't it? You know, it's basically having sensors on each parking or, you know, bike mount so you can see exactly where and how many bikes there are in the carriage. That's the HPF system that I've just learned about. <laughs> Sounds like you've really got your head around it. <laughs> right. 
Anything else? Well, it ta- it holds four thousand bikes. Oh, <laughs> great! It's got you know new and improved lighting system that's eco friendly. Oh, nice, yeah. brilliant, yeah. And it's also got a highly floor. <laughs> a what? A floor? Yeah, no, it's got a floor. Yeah, cool. It's cool, man. <laughs> you sold it, mate. Yeah. Uh, it's. <laughs> Interestingly, I will say though, it's a, the only reason they're able to do this whole project was because they, <laughs> they were supported by the light. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's been... <laughs> All right, yeah. Moving on. No, 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 no. We're not no, moving on. No. Not yet. Hang on a minute. <laughs> Interestingly, this project was only made possible. Yeah. Because because of the the light. <laughs> Which is what? <laughs> a flooring specialist. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. That specialises in business. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That was the story we've all been waiting for. Thanks, mate. Yeah, you're welcome. So um, parking.net. Uh, we should all check that out. Yeah. Um, for news on job opportunities as well, check out parking.net. Yeah, cool. Um, <laughs> right. <clears throat> Right. Well, I did. I did actually have a look at Parking.net after you told me about it, yeah. and uh, there is actually an international convention on parking technology, which is coming up just after Eurobike, <laughs> the end of June. So I'm wondering whether Ollie wants to stay in Germany, go straight from Eurobike. Do you know what? I think you want nothing more. Yeah, that's cool. I think right. he actually needs quite a lot of help on parking because the amount of rental cars he catches. <laughs> Let's move on to yeah. parking.net. Right, okay. Uh, something uh, that we also spotted this week uh, that was uh, equally amazing, um, bike brands doing their bit to help the environment. Yeah. Uh, now, it's a t- it's a tough gig, right? It's a very difficult thing to unpack. Mm. One or two people doing it. Schwalbe giving it a go, aren't they? Uh, so the tyre manufacturer announced their first ever bike inner tube recycling program in the US. So mm. this comes hot on the heels from the success in Europe where they have successfully recycled 9 million tubes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's cool. Um, that is. It's, it's great news. Some of you hope goes from strength to strength. But also, I would encourage everyone before recycling inner tubes to try and stick a patch on it. The best recycling yeah, you can do it yourself first. It's yeah. just yeah, just to use it again. Yeah, uh, yeah. Stick a patch on it. Mm. It's a, it's a it's a forgotten art. That it, it, it very much is. You're right. Um, sorry for laughing. I just, for some reason, I can't contain myself when you're talking so much about about interesting things. Interesting things. <laughs> anyway, right. I'm going to tell you some really interesting news. Go on. That comes, you know. <laughs> right. And lastly, I must add that the highly anticipated Netflix series, Unchanged, that was filmed at last year's Tour de France, is set to air on Thursday, which I'm sure the whole cycling world is really excited to see because of how well, you know, the F1, the F1 did, you know, the drive to survive. And it will be interesting to see, you know, how big of an impact it makes in the sport, I guess. Because yeah, that's it. Yeah, you're right. Will it bring in new viewers like yeah. everyone now who's like, oh, I didn't use like Formula One? Yeah, exactly. And will yeah. it, you know, will it turn, you know, the DSs and the cycling superstars that we know and love into worldwide superstars? I'm interested to see as it did in F1. Yeah, I'm just interested to see how they've done it. Yeah, as well, because because it's a lot harder, isn't it, filming a race with 180 people in it? Not to mention all the support staff mm. compared to like a very closed shop that is F1. So, uh, I, so yeah, I would also add: to, is it going to be? Is they going to? Are they going to be? Is Netflix going to be at the 2023 race? Yeah, they are. Apparently, oh, they are. Is yeah, that yeah, they're, they're all, yeah, I think they're already in for season two. There you go. There you go. Whether or not season two comes out or not is down mm. to uh, well us lot to see whether we watch it. Mm. But uh, yeah, I'm going to be really looking forward to that. Maybe we'll have a little discussion next week on oh, the GCN yeah. show. So we can all binge watch it. Um, if you've got time after watching the Criterium de Dauphiné and all the other cool oh, stuff. I was going to say. That's yeah. on GCN+. Plus. Uh, right, now I have got some very exciting stuff to tell you. Uh, we have got a competition result. So this is competition um, offering GCN newsletter subscribers the chance to win an ultimate GCN racing bundle containing GCN Plus subscription, three T-shirts, the complete fan's guide to pro cycling book, which we've got up there. This is, this is actually, like, if you haven't won the competition, 
you want to get yourself that. It's yeah. proper cool, isn't it? <laughs> um, anyway, uh, we'd like to thank everyone who signed up to the newsletter, and we can announce the winners. Drum roll, please. First prize, Mr. Michael Eccles. Runner-up, number one, Romeo Bonta. You get a GCN mug. Oh. 250 grams of GCN's finest coffee. Mm. Uh, Runner-up two, Roberto Benavides. Runner-up three, Ross James. Ken Rossner. Alan Campbell. So congratulations to you yeah, six. Yeah, very well done. Um, there you go. So, uh, so that's super cool, isn't it? Um, and also, we've got to say, whilst we're on in-house business... Global Bike Festival, mm, nearly on us. Woo! It is fast approaching and we are all really excited to be out there. We're also excited to all celebrate Sai's 40th birthday. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I'm excited to celebrate with you. I'm not mm. excited to, to actually have the birthday. But, you know. No, anyway. I mean, 40, mate. I know. 40 years old. I'll be celebrating with the likes of Jens Voigt, Mark Beaumont. You got Jens Voigt coming to your birthday party. Yeah, Andrew Feather. Uh, anyway, the, it's if you haven't got your ticket yet, there is still time. Do a cheeky little last mm. minute schlep over to Austria. Come join us because it is going to be absolutely yeah. epic, isn't it? Um, so we've got road, we've got gravel, we've got mountain bike, we've got e-mountain bike. The whole shebang. Mm. Everyone's going to be there. All in one place. Yeah. So, uh, so no, it's going to be properly cool. Um, and, uh, yeah, we might even see Lloydie on a bike. Well, that will be one for sore eyes. Yeah, it will, won't it? Mm. There we go. Right, anyway, yeah, come join us. It'll be mint. It's time now for Caption Competition, that part of the show where you get a chance to get your hands on a coveted GCN Elite water bottle by captioning a photo that we'll give you. Uh, it has to be funny, of course. Uh, anyway, we'll give you the results from the last week first, so you get a get a bit of a sense of just how amazingly witty it is. Yeah. This is the photo. Uh, Hank, who is the winner? The winner is no no N optimized, taking aerodynamic analysis to its logical end. Sudal Quick Step has reduced the frontal area of its team by fitting eight riders into just two bodies. <laughs> Which, like is, which is impressive. It is impressive. Yeah, also, it's fairly small riders as well. N optimized, N optimized. Got optimized. a lot of thumbs up yeah, for that yeah. comment. So, uh, so there we go. Get in touch, and we will get a GCN Elite water bottle out. Wingy, to you. it's way too. Yeah. Uh, here we go. The caption for this week. Can I get a start? Yeah, go on, mate. Because I think well, I am notoriously awful at this. Well, we all are. That's kind of the point, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Um, right. <clears throat> First there was the Crocs, then it was the hats. Next, they're only going to be giving us one arm warmer. Yeah. See what I did there? Yeah, taken from from earlier Zara in the show, and, the... and then like you yeah, know inspiration from yeah. Zara. Yeah, they go. and their fashion designers. Yeah. Uh, no, let's you know, Rafa obviously influenced Zara. It's not the other way around. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, there we go. Um, right, I'm sure you can do a heck of a lot better. Juicy mm. Elite water bottle up for grabs. Get involved in the comments section. We'll pick a winner next week. It's now time for Comments of the Week, the part of the show where we go through comments you've left over last week's video and we pick out our favourites. Can I make a start on this one? Yeah, mate, go for it. Under last week's show, that uh, Cy and Connor presented. I came along. Lata Lata. Hankerman cycling action figure. Hankerman captures the essence of a true cycling champion as he leads his team to victory from his sleek aerodynamic suit to his superbike. Every element exudes power, style, and determination. Hankerman is crafted to detail and is more than just a cycling action figure. Hankerman embodies the true cycling spirit, made of 100% recycled inner tubes and just 15 centimeters tall. Available. In the GCN shop from the 6th of June. <laughs> to be fair, that is marketing gold. It's unreal. So, it? whoever wrote that, uh, Lata, Lata, Lata Lata, clearly you work for uh, yeah. a big advertising agency. Yeah. It's cracking. Um, I loved it. And I'll give you another one, actually. Yeah. Okay, Hankerman is pure gold. Another one. The Hankerman was a hoot. Loved it. One more comment. Hank is epic. I mean, he is always epic. Epic, all challenges, epic videos, and now epic cycling shorts. But how, surely... many, how many comments have you got in here? Hold on, one more. Hank cross cycling shorts. Keep that going forward. Hankerman, please have this every week. Loved it. Hank cycling shorts are so good. Also, the glass. Loved seeing Hank present cycling shorts. Loved our new cycling shorts from all time. Right. And it just goes on. <laughs> I don't think there's any more comments this week. I mean, you did do you did do a good job, mate, last week. 
<laughs> no, that's great. That's yeah, super cool. Well, let's have let's have Hand Command back then. Yeah, this time though, can I really do it properly? Like, like properly. You mean like Hand Command? Like properly though, <laughs> like uniform and everything. <laughs> Let us know if you'd like yeah. Hank to have a uniform for uh, his Hand Command <laughs> segment. Like, like moustache and stuff like you. Proper. You've got a moustache. Yeah, but like proper, like bushy and you know, wild hair and suit and. Dude, you've got a proper bussy moustache and wild hair at the minute. Anyway, right, let's move on. Um, <laughs> we, uh, that's, yeah, this is a, there's an awful lot of comments. <laughs> right. Uh, under, uh, on that show as well about has cycling reached peak marketing BS, um, a very well-known brand recently described their return to lace-up cycling shoes as something like 22 points of individual tension adjustment. Uh, Joe Wallace sent that one in. That is absolutely yeah, goals, brilliant. I wish I'd spotted that one. Yeah. I also wish I knew who it is as well. Yeah, yeah. Genius. And on uh, will your next bike look like this? Wow, that is the coolest thing like in the world. Absolutely incredible how it works and how quickly it changes colour. Just amazing. I absolutely love how it looks. Again, just the coolest thing. So Basically, that's awesome. like us talking about an Arduino board, isn't Literally it? Literally, exactly uh, the yeah. same. Yeah, under mm. can a vintage race bike survive a modern bike race? Uh, really like the takeaway message at the end. It says mm. NT2883. Uh, I recently tried a couple of crits after exclusively racing track for a few years. Turned up on a $200 Facebook Marketplace special sporting 15-year-old Tiagra. Did I win? No, I did not. Did I have fun? Way more than $200 worth. So run what you brung. There yeah. you go. Just get stuck into bicycle racing. And last comment... That will shout out the or on under the awesome engineering of land speed record bikes. Finally, a bike that won't ruin Ollie's hair. <laughs> well, there you go. Pretty sure Ollie ruins Ollie's hair, doesn't he? I'm pretty sure he does. Yeah, he does. Uh, right. What is coming up on GCN over the next week? I hear you ask. Uh, on Wednesday, we've got don't wreck your fitness. Uh, on Thursday, we've got time trial tips with Mr. Ollie Bridgewood, yep. which I'm very looking forward to. Uh, on Friday, cargo bike versus car. Yeah, which, which is, going is to be better. A good one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and then on Saturday, Ollie has been out scouting the toughest climbs you can yep. find. He thinks he's found a new hardest climb in His the world. His quest continues. It does indeed. Mm. And then, as promised, on Sunday... Connor's Unbound Adventures. What happened to the big man? We all want to know. When he tackled Unbound. Yeah, we do indeed all want to know. Um, so there we go. And then obviously, it's not just GCN on YouTube. GCN Tech got some bangers coming up this week. GCN yeah. Plus documentary out this week is about Team Sky, the rise mm. of the super team. And then, of course, you've got the Dauphiné to watch as well. Yeah, so, so uh, plenty, plenty, plenty out there for all of you to consume cycling content, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Don't forget to ride your bikes as well, though. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's going to be hard with all that. Yeah, it is indeed. Content. All right. There we go. That's the end of the show for this week, isn't it? Yeah, we hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave a comment and a like if you enjoyed this video. And we'll see you, I guess, next week.